Welcome to my course on genome editing and engineering. Today we are going to discuss about targeted genetic modification, the second part which is part of uh, module 4. So till now uh, you have learnt about knockout and knock-ins and you know that knockout is a gene modification technique in which the genes of an organism uh, is made non-functional or inoperative. So briefly knockouts are organisms with gene loss or loss of gene function and these are used to study uh, gene function by drawing inferences from the differences between knockout mutants and wild type or normal individuals. Uh, in contrast to these, uh, knock-in technique is essentially the opposite of a gene knockout. So in knock-ins, uh, organisms have gain of gene function and these are also used to study gene function uh, by drawing inferences from differences between the knock-in mutant and wild types. We can create uh, knockouts or knock-ins uh, with one to several genes at a time and also can carry out knockout and knock-in in the same organism with respect to uh, separate genes or we may uh, create a knockout first and then again uh, recreate a knock-in in the same uh, organism with respect to the same gene. Uh, knocking out two genes simultaneously in an organism will generate a double knockout which we call as DKO and we can similarly have uh, triple knockouts uh, TKO or uh, quadruple knockouts and so on and in fact uh, uh, similarly we can have uh, uh, double knock-ins or uh, triple knock-ins and so on and so forth. In fact, uh, these type of techniques are used for creating humanized organisms which we will discuss at a later point of time uh, in this course. Now, uh, just focusing on one gene, we may create a heterozygous knockout or a homozygous knockout and uh, you can easily understand uh, homozygous knockout, uh, both the alleles uh, are being uh, made inoperationable. But in a heterozygous knockout, one of the wild type gene is allele is retained uh, while the other copy is uh, made uh, inactive. So for carrying out uh, knockouts, uh, we have to take uh, use of uh, vectors. So let us discuss a little bit about the design of the vector that is used for creating knockouts. In general, a knockout vector contains uh, the following. It would have uh, two stretches of nucleotides with homology uh, to the targeted gene and a selection marker. The selection marker was, would help us in selecting a successful uh, knockout. Then there is a restriction site uh, which is used to linearize the vector construct uh, for homologous recombination to occur uh, because the target organism uh, will have a uh, DNA uh, in a linearized form. Let us focus on the two homologous uh, stretches or the homology arms. Uh, these uh, arms flank the target gene. So you can see here uh, a, a gene of interest and corresponding to the gene of interest we have a engineered construct and in these uh, engineered construct you can see that there are two 3 prime and 5 prime homology arms. So these are the flanking homology arms uh, on the two sides of the target gene. Then there is around uh, 2 kb of uh, require a homology requirement uh, for recombination to occur within a cell. Uh, however, uh, in general 6 to 14 uh, kb of homology is typically used for targeting constructs. In these uh, uh, engineered construct, you can also see the presence of a uh, negative uh, selection marker or the selection marker that we uh, discussed about in the earlier slide. Then uh, let us discuss about the positive selection genes uh, in a vector. So basically, uh, we have uh, various uh, drugs which are being used uh, for this procedure and these drugs may be neomycin. Uh, puromycin or hygromycin 
uh, in general neuromycin is the most commonly used drug uh, for positive selection. So, integration of the neomycin uh, phosphotransferase gene uh, neo R uh, provides resistance to uh, this drug uh, neomycin and uh, aminoglycoside that interferes with protein synthesis in eukaryotic cells. And we may have similarly uh, genes which are offering resistance to the other two drugs uh, puromycin or uh, hygromycin. By adding of the HSB thymidine kinase gene adjacent to one of the vector homologous arms helps in determining homologous recombination or random integration. This is the role of the negative, negative selection genes in the vector. So, the random integrants will usually contain an intact copy of the HSV TK gene when inserted into the genome. Cells with random integrants will be killed uh, during negative selection uh, through treatment with gangcyclovir or uh, FIAO. The presence of HSB TK causes phosphorylation of these compounds, uh, which inhibits DNA synthesis uh, leading to cell death. So, here you can see the construct uh, in brief you have a, a homologous arm over here, positive selection D gene, another homologous arm, and a negative. Uh, selection gene uh, in this uh, construct. Now, we have basically two types of vectors uh, which are used for uh, knockouts or creating of knockouts or for the targeted mutations. Uh, they are the replacement vectors and insertion time vectors. Replacement vectors are widely used for efficiently generating uh, knockout mice. Uh, insertion time vectors are used occasionally to disrupt the genomic locus for creating knockout mice. So, in the first case, the gene is totally replaced, uh, but in the second case, the gene is not replaced, but the gene is disrupted by insertion of an intervening uh, sequences. Let us now focus on the first type, the replacement vector. So, you can see here the replacement vector which has two homology arms as we have discussed earlier, then uh, the selective markers and there is a uh, restriction site here. Uh, when this restriction site acts on this vector, it will linearize the vector as in this. Through replacement vector, a drug selection marker gene is exchanged with genomic target to disrupt the gene. In this vector, the positive selection uh, marker is flanked by two homology arms as already shown in the diagram and the negative selection marker is added near one of the targeting homology arms. As also discussed in the earlier slide and the vector is linearized for targeting. And the vector backbone protects HSB TK uh, from uh, nucleases. Now, uh, there is a short arm and there is a long arm uh, in this uh, replacement uh, vector. So, in the short arm uh, of a uh, typical replacement vector, homologous sequence consists of about 1 to 2 kb span of DNA sequence for a short homology arm. Uh, and it can be as small as half kb without affecting uh, target efficiency. In the long arm, there is a presence of around 4 to 6 kb uh, genomic uh, fragment. Uh, here increasing the length of homology from 8 to 110 kb uh, can be done, but it does not enhance the frequency of uh, homologous recombination. So, it is better to retain an optimum length. How do we do? the homologous recombination through a replacement vector. So, here you have a uh, gene targeting vector and then you have the genomic DNA here uh, into which uh, you want to do the replacement of a uh, target gene and then uh, you have a reason here in the vector which would be inserted uh, into the genome. The replacement of uh, target gene 
by the drug resistance here uh, can be seen in this picture. So, the two homologous arms would facilitate two homologous recombination events uh, to insert the targeting construct retaining neo R gene into the homologous uh, genetic locus. So, uh, recombination uh, homologous recombination has taken place in the two uh, homologous recombination arms and you can see here that this uh, region uh, from here uh, to here okay, is getting replaced and this region is removed in the final uh, product and uh, as a result of these the neomycin R gene will get into this genetic locus of the uh, targeted gene and then we can use these for selection purposes. The negative selection marker SSB TK uh, should not uh, be recombined into the uh, chromosome uh, in case of targeting construct is randomly integrated in the genome the SSB TK gene will also be uh, integrated. So, the process will result in generation of a null mutant then prevents any gene expression from the uh, targeted locus. So, there is a loss of function uh, of here over here because these gene is being removed and as uh, already told uh, these HSB TK marker is not included here. The region that is included in the targeted uh, region uh, range from this area uh, to this area as you can see. Now, let us discuss about the insertion type uh, vectors. So, here uh, you have uh, two axons uh, and then uh, you have a uh, uh, neomycin R gene over here. So, this type of vector is designed with just one arm of a homologous uh, sequence. It will contain a uh, drug selection gene which integrates into the genome with a single uh, recombination event. So, you can see here that uh, this is the gene locus and recombination has taken place in this particular region and as a result of which you have the insertion of uh, exon 2 of the vector and the neomycin R gene flanked by this re uh, region attached to the neomycin resistance gene and this exon 2 belongs to the targeted organisms uh, DNA. And then uh, as a result of these uh, you can see in the uh, targeted organism there is no any loss of any DNA sequence uh, both the exons as well as the intervening region uh, is retained, but we have here insertion of the sequence which is there in the vector or the insertion type vector. The homology arm only acts to provide site for integration in the targeted uh, genome. A restriction enzyme site located within the homology arm is used to linearize the construct so that homologous recombination can occur. The whole vector gets integrated into targeted genome as already uh, uh, discussed. Now, we have an idea of uh, replacement vectors and insertion type vectors. Uh, what are the applications of such vectors? Let us discuss uh, one by one. Insertion of the whole vector into target genome would cause uh, partial duplication of the uh, targeted allele. Uh, both replacement and insertion type vectors have been successfully used in gene targeting experiments uh, in embryonic uh, stem cells. Most of the gene knockouts in embryonic stem cells are carried out by uh, replacement vector as it is easy and convenient uh, to handle. 
Uh, insertion vectors on the other hand have been useful in generating point, point mutations by the hit and uh, run procedure which we will uh, uh, discuss uh, uh, a little later. Let us now discuss about the introduction of uh, subtle mutations which is achieved by either uh, using replacement or uh, insertion type uh, vectors. Uh, it can introduce uh, desired subtle mutations such as uh, point mutation, uh, micro deletion or insertion uh, in to the target gene. This can be achieved uh, through various processes uh, like heat and run approach, tag and exchange approach and recombinase based approach. We will study all these various approaches one by one in the following uh, slides. Let us first discuss about the heat and run approach. So, in the heat and run approach, uh, the first step uh, uh, is to uh, uh, use an insertion type vector uh, for first homologous recombination uh, in order to introduce a point uh, mutation. So, this is shown as a uh, gene of uh, interest uh, GOI here uh, with point uh, mutation into the target uh, genomic uh, locus. So, this is the vector construct over here. Uh, you have two exons, uh, one tree which flanks the gene of interest and then you have the um, HSV TK marker and a neomycin resistance marker. So, uh, the first step is the heat step as uh, already discussed and this is the genomic locus which we are targeting which has three exons 1, 2 and uh, 3. The second step comprises the run step. Now, what is this run step? Due to the introduction of duplicate copy in target locus by insertion type vector cell can carry out intrachromosomal recombination. The run step would lead to excision of both drug selection genes only retaining the introduced uh, mutation in the uh, in gene of interest. So, here uh, you can see the target uh, uh, genomic uh, locus 1. So, this has the exon 1, the gene of interest and the exon 3 and uh, neomycin resistance and if you read it from this side you can understand the sequence up to here. And then uh, this uh, is flanked by the 3 exons of the targeted uh, genomic locus 1. Now, in the run step the GOI is only retain uh, because of this intra chromosomal uh, recombination from this stretch to this stretch uh, these are removed and this exon will become part of the targeted genomic locus 2. So, the clones after second recombination stand, st uh, step can be screened by uh, the FIAU. Let us discuss the second approach uh, which is a tag and exchange approach. So, in the tag and exchange approach uh, you can see here uh, there is a vector 1 and there is another vector 2. So, let us study the first step the tag step. And you have uh, the genomic locus with 3 exons here 1, 2 and 3 and there is homology arm between exon 1 and 2 uh, and then uh, the homology arm uh, all, uh, flanked, uh, uh, flanking the exon 3 uh, region. And then similarly uh, you have this uh, HSB, TK and uh, NEO R uh, selection markers. Uh, which lie between exon 1 and exon 3 and due to the 
homology of these regions there will be homologous uh, recombination. So, in the first step homologous recombination with vector 1 will lead to the replacement of axon 2 with a positive neomycin R and a negative uh, TK selection uh, marker. Now, in the second step uh, which is the exchange step uh, the neomycin resistant clones which are generated after first step are subjected to a second round of gene targeting with the vector 2 and this is the vector 2 with exon 1 and exon 3 and under the sequence uh, which lie in between exon 1 and 3 and then there is uh, homology uh, between exon 1 on the left side as you can see and homology on the right hand side uh, between the exons uh, 3. Now, due to homologous recombination uh, effects, the inserted markers uh, NEO and HSBTK will be uh, replaced by harboring a point mutation uh, as uh, shown in this uh, figure. The third procedure uh, is the recombination based approach. So, here also you can see that uh, you have uh, a vector uh, which is having uh, two exons 1 and exons uh, 3 and then you have these uh, markers HSBTK and uh, Neo R and you have the LOX sites uh, which are uh, adjacent to the HSBTK and on the one side and uh, neomycin R on the other side. And uh, we have discussed about this Crelox uh, mechanism in our earlier uh, uh, classes. You also have here one uh, point mutation and you have a uh, dif diphtheria toxin gene A here. Okay. And this is the map of the genomic locus that we are targeting with three exons and uh, two homology arms. So, in the first step the replacement type targeting vector is used to introduce a point mutation uh, into the exon. So, here due to this uh, uh, homology uh, you have uh, these HSBTK and neomycin R and the point mutation as well as the LOX sites incorporated. So, this is the targeted locus 1 uh, output of the first step. So, diphtheria toxin gene fragment is actually lost here, uh, but it is retained in cells that have integrated the vector randomly and therefore, this toxin will kill those cells. So, uh, we are using this uh, to uh, make our uh, selection uh, much more efficient. In the second step, uh, selection markers flanked by these uh, LOX P sites uh, are removed by these CRE LOX mediated recombination reaction. And we have already learned about the CRE LOX mediated recombination reaction. So, uh, the clones will uh, that lost the TK gene uh, can be enriched by their resistance to uh, uh, fewer uh, selection. So, finally, uh, we lose these uh, genes over here uh, and then we only have uh, exon 1 and exon 3 uh, with a point mutation uh, in between. So, this is how the recombinase or the CRELOX recombination system is used to create a knockout. Uh, there are certain drawbacks associated uh, with uh, these uh, processes. Uh, for example, we may not have a complete uh, knockout sometimes. Uh, so, there are certain uh, 
problems uh, uh, which occur in a knockout experiment and uh, uh, these are due to various reasons. Uh, number one, a gene may uh, residually uh, expressed if there exist alternative or a cryptic promoters uh, that, are not, that are not disrupted uh, in the uh, targeted allele. Uh, then there may be differential splicing in eukaryotic cells uh, which could also generate RNA uh, species where the selection marker is skipped. Another drawback is that uh, the retro transcription of the drug resistance gene uh, is another way for the appearance of mutant mRNA that has some coding sequences from the targeted allele. The neomycin R marker gene contains a strong uh, promoter. Uh, therefore, uh, there is a chance of neo R gene interfering with uh, downstream genes after gene targeting via a replacement uh, vector. Uh, polyideation in site is sometimes uh, skipped for neo R gene, uh, which may result in slicing of downstream genes with neo R gene producing mRNA. Uh, to avoid uh, promoter interference, neo R gene is uh, placed in the opposite orientation of the gene transcription uh, for the targeted uh, allele. Uh, this orientation also ensures uh, that the downstream genes are not influenced by the strong promoter of a neo R gene. What are the various steps uh, one need to follow for designing a knockout uh, construct uh, in a laboratory setting? Uh, we have to start with the retrieval of a DNA sequence which contains the target or the gene of interest or the sequence of interest. Then we have to uh, design primers uh, for homology arms and then go for genomic DNA isolation and then assembly of the homology arms and uh, selection markers. So, for uh, retrieval of the DNA uh, sequence of the targeted gene, we have to uh, visit uh, genome databases, uh, exon intron sequence, then size of the gene and the chromosomal location of the allele to be targeted uh, should be uh, gathered. I mean the information uh, need to be known. The whole genome, whole gene sequence with uh, 15 kb of upstream and 15 kb of downstream sequences is retrieved for homology arm design. Uh, once an allele is uh, selected for targeted deletion, the flanking genomic sequence should be examined to ensure that any possible neighboring genes are not disrupted uh, during recombination. So, for example, uh, here uh, we have uh, mus musculus uh, database uh, in which we may try to find out a target gene and while doing so we need to focus that uh, we get the complete information about the location of the gene in the particular chromosome and the genetic sequence of the particular gene and 15 kb of upstream and 50 kb of downstream sequence uh, which will help us in designing the two flanking homology arms. For this you may use uh, uh, different uh, databases depending on the organism and uh, these are some of the databases from which you can get lot of genomic informations uh, on, on mice, uh, the, the Broad Institute mouse genome project, then you have uh, MGI the mouse genome informatics and uh, you have uh, Genomics Institute Santa Cruz uh, Genome Browser, Browser or the NCBI Genome Data uh, Viewer. Let us start with the primer design for homology arms. So, uh, you are all uh, well acquainted uh, I suppose with the PCR polymerase chain reaction uh, which has uh, certain requirements like the uh, use of a forward primer and a a reverse primer and uh, they will amplify a genomic sequence uh, in between them. So, for 
designing this forward primer and the reverse primer we need the genetic information. So, the location and size of the homology arm around the targeted genetic sequence uh, to be knocked out uh, is to be uh, decided. Uh, keeping an ideal size of sort homology arm uh, 1 to 2 kb of uh, the sequence uh, is uh, targeted and for the long homology arm 4 to 6 kb uh, of sequence will uh, yield good efficiency in the homologous recombination and you have to remember the discussion on the short arm and the long arm we had uh, in one of the previous slides and the requirement of the concept which is used for primer design for homology arms. The PCR primer pairs used to amplify the 5 prime and the 3 prime homology arms uh, from the genomic DNA uh, is to be designed and there are various online softwares to which you can go for the uh, primer design optimization. Uh, in general however, uh, the optimum criteria for uh, PCR primer uh, design are as below. Uh, we uh, select a length of around 23 to 30 base pairs and uh, we target a uh, annealing temperature of around 60 to 68 degrees centigrade and the GC content uh, uh, should be ideally around uh, 40 to uh, 60 percent maximum. And the next step uh, in this procedure uh, is the genomic DNA isolation. So, there are various standard protocols uh, available for genomic DNA uh, isolation uh, which you can find out from uh, laboratory manuals and some standard protocols. Uh, here we are focusing on the isolation of genomic DNA from uh, embryonic uh, stem cells or from uh, a mouse of the same strain uh, uh, which will uh, be used uh, for uh, the knockout reaction. Uh, a 129 SV genomic clone is most commonly used uh, for constructing uh, targeting, uh, targeting vectors since most stem cells are derived from these uh, particular mouse uh, strain. Uh, using a genomic clone uh, of a mouse strain uh, different from the embryonic stem cell strain will reduce the frequency of uh, homologous recombination. So, you need a uh, model uh, strain, model organism, not only the model organism, you also you need a standard strain uh, to have a uh, higher frequency of uh, homologous recombination for successful uh, gene knockout uh, reaction. So, uh, either you use this strain or you use the embryonic stem cell uh, for obtaining the genomic DNA uh, by standard uh, protocol. So, once uh, the PCR primer uh, is uh, uh, designed uh, based on the retrieved genomic DNA and uh, the uh, for the homology arms designing and then the genomic uh, DNA is uh, isolated. Uh, we go on to the next step of assembly of the homology arms and the selection marker. The homology arm is amplified with the primers uh, designed for the PCR reaction and uh, they should be assembled with the drug uh, selection marker. The construct is ligated in such a way that long and short homology arms flank the drug selection uh, marker gene. The vector is ligated in a way so that upon recombination the positive selection marker is transcribed in the opposite orientation of the uh, targeted gene. The restriction enzyme sites should be located outside the regions of uh, homology uh, typically between the plasmid backbone and a uh, targeting arm. So, let us study this uh, vector with uh, drug marker uh, genes over here and you can see here uh, a, a, a site with uh, many uh, uh, restriction uh, enzyme uh, 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 I mean uh, uh, or multiple cloning site over here and then you have another site of similar site over here and uh, uh, within a very narrow stretch. Okay. 
So, now uh, you have this uh, uh, NEO located over here and uh, TK uh, located uh, over here and then uh, this is the P, uh, P and TK4 uh, plasmid. So, such plasmids like PP and T or uh, PQ scrambler series uh, contains both uh, these neomycin and thymidine kinase genes and then they have uh, common restriction enzyme sites which are positioned in locations to facilitate subcloning of the uh, homology arms as shown over here. With PP and T for example, one homology arm can be subcloned in the restriction enzyme site uh, XBEL, uh, BAM H1 and then uh, KPN1 and ECOR1 this particular site uh, which is located between neomycin R and HSB uh, TK gene. Both of these drug selection marker genes in this vector are driven by the uh, PGK or 3 phosphoglycerate kinase uh, promoter. The 3 phosphoglycerate kinase promoter uh, is a housekeeping enzyme uh, and the promoter is required uh, to drive high expression of these uh, drug markers. The second homology arm can be placed adjacent to the uh, neo R gene uh, with uh, NOT1 uh, and XHO1 restriction enzyme um, sites here. Uh, since uh, NOT1 is a rare 8 base uh, cutter, uh, this site is useful for uh, linearizing uh, targeting uh, constructs. Let us now discuss about subcloning of the homology arms. Once the location for targeted deletion uh, is decided, the restriction enzyme sites in short homology arm uh, around 1 to 2 kb inland and uh, the long homology arm 4 to 6 kb uh, 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 long are mapped. Uh, this helps uh, in the subcloning of the homology arms in the vector in order to make the uh, final construct. So, here uh, this is the short uh, homology arm uh, around half kb uh, here inland and then uh, this is the long uh, arm around uh, 21 uh, kb over here and you can see the various exons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in a contiguous uh, way and then you have uh, the map of the various uh, restriction sites uh, in this uh, uh, genomic layout. Uh, for subcloning of the homology arms, uh, if it is devoid of uh, restriction sites, uh, we uh, will go for certain techniques. Uh, blunt site production can be done with enzymes such as uh, uh, mung bing nuclease uh, to uh, remove a 3 prime uh, overhang and clenopolymerase uh, is used to fill in a 3 prime resistant in case of uh, inc incompatible uh, overhangs. Blunt uh, and can be further ligated with the use of enzyme uh, uh, T4 uh, ligase as uh, shown here in this particular figure. Uh, besides these uh, oligonucleotide adapters can be attached to the insert uh, to have a desired restriction enzyme site uh, to produce the blunt and the DNA. So, this is a, uh, a DNA insert and then we have uh, the adapters over here and we added the adapters to the 5 prime and the 3 prime end of this particular uh, DNA insert and uh, these particular adapters uh, has uh, certain restriction sites uh, which will be uh, you know compatible with in the, in the cloning reaction. Uh, other types of oligonucleate adapters can also be attached to insert a restriction enzyme site to cleave the DNA resulting in the uh, sticky ends. Now, let us focus on the ligation of homology arms uh, into the vector as uh, shown uh, in this particular figure. So, here you have uh, a overlap extension uh, PCR and then uh, this vector is uh, opened up and then uh, by the restriction digestion and this uh, uh, particular fragment is ligated uh, to the uh, open uh, vector 
uh, and then uh, this gives the uh, hybrid uh, molecule over here. So, during ligation the vector can be uh, self ligated if only one restriction enzyme is used to cleave the DNA. Uh, the vector can be uh, incubated with alkaline phosphatase to carry out uh, dephosphorylation of the DNA to prevent this self ligation. And uh, while discussing about the role of alkaline phosphatase in our introductory uh, classes, uh, we have discussed this uh, point uh, thoroughly. Next we go to the design of knock in uh, targeting uh, constructs. Let us now discuss about the design of uh, knock in targeting uh, constructs. So, designing of knock in construct follows the same basic rule as in the case of uh, knockout constructs. However, here uh, we have an additional uh, DNA insert or cDNA of the gene to be uh, inserted. So, we uh, do not use a full gene uh, with exons and introns, we only have a uh, complementary DNA copy of the gene uh, to keep the construct uh, smaller. Uh, the 5 prime and 3 prime homology arms are designed to flank a drug selection marker gene as well as a cDNA of the gene to be uh, inserted. So, this is the uh, homology arm on this DNA, targeted DNA and then uh, we have this vector construct over here and it has homology in these two regions, exon 1 and exon 3 and mm, in, in, in the center you can see uh, the selection marker as well as the uh, cDNA gene and uh, there is another uh, negative uh, uh, selection marker over there. And uh, as a result of this uh, uh, homologous recombination over here, uh, this portion is replaced with this particular uh, construct. So, this is the final uh, product resulting out of this uh, reaction. A polyadenylation or uh, poly A uh, signal should be added along with uh, cDNA which stops transcription downstream uh, of the uh, targeted uh, insertion. This is the uh, polyadenylation uh, sequence. The non-homologous DNA that is uh, the cDNA and uh, neoarginine uh, should have sequence length lesser than total homology length uh, for uh, efficient uh, recombination. What are the steps in production of uh, knockout? and uh, knock in a mouse. Uh, we have to uh, start with uh, isolation of mouse embryonic uh, stem cells, then introduction of targeting vector into endogenous uh, embryonic stem cell genes, and then selection and picking of positively transfected ESC clones identification of homologous recombination uh, ESC clones by southern blot, then injection of the targeted uh, embryonic stem cells into uh, donor blastocytes and implementation uh, into uh, foster mothers. So, here uh, uh, you can see a female mice strain, uh, we are taking the standard strain of 129 uh, SV. So, the mouse embryos uh, blastocytes are collected from the uterine horn of hormone treated superovulated fertilized uh, female mice. The embryonic stem cells are derived from the inner cell mass of the blastocyte. Uh, they are cultured on a feeder layer uh, of mitotically inactivated mouse embryonic fibroblast MEFs in ESC medium supplemented with uh, leukemia inhibitory uh, factor LIF. So, we use uh, uh, mostly micro injection uh, for the introduction of targeting uh, vector into the endogenous embryonic stem cells which we have isolated and cultured uh, in, in, in the first step. So, uh, this is the process of uh, micro injection and you can see here one glass pipette 
pointed glass pipette is being used uh, to deliver the targeting vectors. Uh, although micro injection had uh, uh, the impressive efficiency of around uh, 1 uh, uh, is to 15 targeted recombinants uh, to random intrigants, it is a very tedious uh, method. Uh, now, electroporation is found to be uh, suitable uh, as a mass delivery system with uh, 1 to 1 is to 2400 uh, targeting uh, ratio. Uh, as transformation efficiency of in electroporation is low, as you can see from this uh, figure, 1 is to 24 versus 1 is to 15 versus uh, 1 is to 2400. Uh, it needs a positive selection method uh, to enrich clones that have been inserted uh, with the targeting vector uh, into their uh, genomes. So, for your uh, uh, own understanding, uh, you may uh, study about the electroporation. Uh, method a little bit. So, uh, how we uh, it do electroporation of the embryonic stem cells uh, with the targeting vector? So, before uh, electroporation, the targeting vector is linearized with specific uh, restriction enzymes that uh, have a site in the plasmid uh, backbone. The linearized vector is purified by twofold a phenol chloroform extraction followed by ethanol precipitation and there are suspended in physiological buffer. Embryonic stem cells harvested by uh, trypsinization is prepared in physiological buffer as well. Then electroporation of these uh, linearized vector into the embryonic stem cells are done uh, subsequently. So, here uh, these embryonic stem cells as a result of this electroporation of the linearized vector uh, will be uh, having uh, the transformation happening. And after that transformation uh, happens uh, or transfection happens, uh, we have to select the successfully transfected embryonic uh, stem cells by adding appropriate uh, selection agents uh, to the embryonic stem cell uh, culture medium. Uh, the positive uh, embryonic stem cell clones are picked uh, for uh, further uh, analysis. Now, we need to go for the identification of uh, homologous recombinant embryonic stem cell clones uh, by uh, southern blotting. The genomic DNA is isolated from the ESC clones and digested with an suitable restriction enzyme that produce one cut inside the targeting vector and another cut just outside upstream or downstream the targeting vector in the targeted chromosomal region and southern blotting is done for analysis. The use of an external probe outside of the targeting construct will produce a band with a size corresponding to unmodified wild type allele which is indicated by XKB. Uh, uh, in, in this uh, figure. If homologous recombination occurs, a second band of bigger or smaller size corresponding to the targeted allele uh, indicated by x y k b in this figure uh, will uh, occur. Now, we go for the injection of the targeted uh, embryonic uh, stem cells into donor blastocytes. And, uh, implementation into foster mother. Once uh, the successful transfection uh, is uh, uh, confirmed. So, when the ESCs are derived from mice with an agouti code such as the strain 129SV, the recipient pre-implantation mouse embryos uh, should be collected from female mice with black coats such as uh, strain C57BL6. Uh, Screen homologous recombinant ESC clones are injected into recipient pre-implantation mouse embryos or blastocytes that are collected from female mice with this black coat. These injected uh, blastocytes are then surgically transferred to a recipient pseudo-pregnant foster mother to allow the embryos uh, to develop. So, you have this uh, strain with black coat, a blastocyte from the donor mice is taken and here we inject uh, the clone of homologous recombinants into this 
recipient blastocyte and this is transferred uh, to a recipient uh, pseudo pregnant uh, foster uh, mother. Because the embryonic stem cells and recipient blastocytes were derived from mouse strains with uh, distinguishable coat colors black and white. The desired chimeric offspring can be visually recognized by inspection of coat color chimerism, uh, certain percentage of black and agouti here on the mouse, uh, black agouti. The chimeric offsprings usually only the males uh, because the used ES cell lines are usually uh, male are mated with a strain with a black coat to produce the F1 generation. So, this is the uh, foster mother and did this gives uh, rise to a chimera mouse and you can see here the uh, normal uh, mouse and uh, a crossing between the chimera and the normal mouse will, will result in a normal mouse and heterozygous for uh, gene knockouts. And we carry out breeding of these heterozygous uh, gene knockout uh, population uh, to produce mouse which is homozygous for that particular uh, gene knockout. So, the germline transmission is then confirmed by southern blood analysis or PCR of tail DNA uh, from the agouti mice of the F1 uh, generation. So, by this process uh, uh, starting from uh, isolation of uh, DNA then uh, using vectors for carrying out uh, the knockout or knock-in and then finally uh, implementing them uh, into, into the mice blastocytes and then uh, 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 transferring them to a, a foster mother and then creating a chimeric mouse and then crossing them with normal mice and obtaining a heterozygous de -knock knockout population and by selfing or breeding within this population a homozygous gene knockout or gene knock-in uh, mice uh, can be uh, generated. Now, let us discuss about uh, one method uh, which is known as humanization of experimental uh, animal models. So, in the beginning we discussed that uh, we may have uh, uh, double knockouts, uh, triple knockouts and so on and similarly we may have uh, double knock-ins, uh, triple knock-ins and so on. Now, uh, in, in certain cases uh, mouse and uh, humans have a lot of uh, homology, uh, but some of the genes are not uh, similar. So, we may uh, knock out uh, some of the genes which are not similar uh, to humans in mice. And then we may replace certain genes uh, in the mice uh, with, with human uh, copies. So, uh, for such a uh, humanization program, uh, we may uh, require uh, both kind of approaches, a knockout as well as the knock-in approaches. So, let us briefly uh, find out some of the uh, facts. So, the protein coding regions of the mouse and the human genome are 85 percent identical and uh, therefore, with this uh, high identity or similarity, uh, a mouse is a suitable candidate uh, to study human diseases. So, we may be able to mm, uh, draw a lot of inferences with this 85 percent similar genes, but now they are 50 percent genes uh, which, which we need to take care of because they, they are different. Briefly, the mouse and human genome both contain around uh, 3.1 uh, billion uh, base pairs. However, a small number uh, of human protein coding genes uh, lack a, a mouse uh, ortholog. And uh, both these organ, uh, organisms have different uh, physiological and uh, immunological uh, features or properties or characteristics. Therefore, insertion of human coding sequences into the orthologous mouse, mouse gene uh, through gene targeting uh, would make us uh, capable in obtaining uh, humanized uh, knock-ins. And this would help in uh, creating more accurate mouse models for disease than working with a mutant um, mouse uh, protein. 
So, uh, for humanized uh, knock in, uh, in uh, mice production, the gene of interest from human genome is uh, incorporated into the targeting vector. Uh, homologous recombination occurs to exchange the uh, human exon with the mouse autologous uh, exon sequence and the human gene will be expressed under the control of the wild type mouse uh, regulatory uh, sequences. So, here in this uh, uh, you can see ME stands for the uh, mouse exons and HE stands uh, for the human exons and this is the wild type wild type mouse. So, these are mouse exons 1, 2, 3, 4 and this is a vector uh, which is vector construct with all the elements required for knocking. Uh, you have this uh, human exon 1, human exon 2, uh, the marcazines, uh, the LOX uh, P sites okay, as we have already discussed and these are the stretches with uh, uh, homologous sequences and as a result of these, uh, this wild type mouse is replaced with human genes as well as a neomycin R. Uh, um, marker and we can select this uh, and then at, at, at a later uh, step uh, using the Cree log p uh, recombinase system uh, these uh, antibiotic gene uh, is uh, got rid of and this is the constitutive uh, knock-in allele uh, which uh, is the outcome of this entire um, exercise. Let us have some example of uh, some uh, CD14 uh, gene knock-in strategy uh, to express the human uh, CD89 in, in mice. So, the targeting vector contains around uh, 2.6 kilobase of DNA homolog, uh, homologous to the 5 prime and 3 prime sequence of the mouse CD40 gene here uh, with uh, blue boxes you can see over here represent the coding region and the green boxes the non-coding region. Then you have 1 kb of a 2a cd 89 this is a yellow box here uh, and a effort in neo uh, effort acid. Homologous recombination between the targeting vector and the endogenous uh, cd14 gene in the mouse embryonic stem cells results in the insert of the whole uh, 2A and uh, CD89 uh, region. And then uh, you have these uh, various uh, recombination steps due to FLP uh, then uh, uh, Cre recombination uh, taking place. The CD89 transiting mice uh, were inter intercrossed with FLP mice to exercise uh, the, the neo uh, cassette. So, with this we come to end of this uh, lecture. Uh, thank you uh, for your uh, kind attention. Mm -hmm.